Hello, I'm Peter Murphy Lewis. And I'm Kelly Smith. Welcome to I Love Chili TV's weekly newscast. Making headlines this week in Chile, lead stories include the Santiago Marathon, Lollapalooza, and Green Culture. In politics, we will cover the maritime dispute, the resignation of Van Rysselberg, and advertising banned in textbooks. Ali will cover culture, and Pascal will bring us up to speed with sports. The Santiago Marathon. The fifth annual Santiago Marathon saw 28,000 people turn out to run through seven districts of Chile's capital last Sunday. The figure is a record for the race, which year after year adds new members and has become one of the biggest sporting fixtures in the country. Kenyan athlete Julius Ketter won the race with a time of 2 hours, 13 minutes and 22 seconds. He received a $20,000 prize and the honor of taking the title in the world's first sustainable marathon. In the half marathon competition, Ecuadorian Miguel Almechi and Chilean Andrea Reboledo crossed the finish line first. And in the 10K, the winners were Enzo Yanez and the men's race and Roxana Bastidas in the women's. However, the most regrettable thing on the day was the story of 14-year-old Kevin Silva, who was hit by a drunk driver while making his way to the race. Sadly, the accident caused him to lose both of his legs. The teenager remains in critical condition in a local hospital while the driver has been remanded in custody. More than 100,000 rock fans enjoyed the Lollapalooza Festival last weekend at O'Higgins Park in Santiago. Around 60 bands took part, including The Killers, The Flaming Lips, Deftones, Cypress Hill, James, Ben Harper, and Fatboy Slim, who took the stage alongside local artists such as Francisca Valenzuela, Los Bunkers, and Chico Trujillo. American rap superstar Kanye West closed the festival with a spectacular finale. After the resounding success of Lollapalooza in Chile, the first time the 20-year-old festival has been held outside of the United States, creator Perry Farrell has already confirmed that it will return to the country in 2012. The new green culture campaign, driven by the Environment Ministry, was a huge success at Lollapalooza, significantly reducing the waste produced by the festival in Parque O'Higgins. As part of the event's recycling plan, 1,300 young volunteers helped to sort the rubbish left by the 100,000 festival goers. This reduced the amount of waste to just 12 tons, significantly less than the 40 tons expected for such a major event. Maritime dispute rumbles on. The argument over Bolivia's access to the Pacific Ocean is refusing to go away. Last week, we reported that Bolivian President Evo Morales had announced his intention to take the matter to international tribunals in The Hague. Then last Sunday, in an early morning address to the nation, Chilean President Sebastián Piñera reiterated his view that it was impossible to give Bolivia sovereign access to the sea as requested. This was due to the fact that the two countries have border treaties in place, established over a hundred years ago, which must be respected. Morales retaliated by accusing Pineda of, quote, ignorance and nonsense, end quote. La Monea spokesperson Eva Van Bauer attempted to defuse the situation by stating that Chile did not intend to get into a war of words with Bolivia and that the way forward to reach a solution was through dialogue. Resignation of Van Rysselberg. After months of controversy, the intendant of Bio Bio region, Jacqueline von Reiselberg, has resigned from government. Her departure follows accusations of fraud and corruption. It is alleged that she gave public funds intended to help people rebuild their homes after February 2010 earthquake to people who did not need them. The main evidence was an audio recording of a general meeting in her constituency where she was caught saying, quote, we use the earthquake in favor of you all, end quote. She has been replaced by the former governor of Bio Bio, Renato Paredes. Advertising banned in textbooks. The Ministry of Education has banned all advertising and branding in school textbooks after finding unacceptable levels in some books aimed at children under 12. Textbooks have historically used specific products and brands for the purposes of teaching. They now use fictitious brands so as to not bias children in favor of one company or another. The changes will take effect in the next printed edition.
Hi, I'm Ali Jabri, and in Culture This Week, we're going over upcoming music concerts and Teatro Hoy. Chile's season of international music continues this week with yet more big names coming to Santiago. On Saturday, 80s band Roxette, remember for hits including It Must Have Been Love and Joyride, will perform at Teatro Capolican. Then on Sunday, it's the turn of Alves Costello at the Movistar Arena or Iron Maiden at Estadio Nacional, depending on whether it's heavy rock or something with a little more soul that takes your fancy. If theater is more your thing, don't miss out on the Teatro Hoy or Theater Today, season brought to you by the organizers of the Summer Santiago Mill Festival. The cycle of contemporary theater will show some of the best current Chilean work, including the international acclaimed play Sin Sangre. Performances are free and take place at locations across the city, including the Museum of Memory and Human Rights and Matucana 100. See ilovechile.cl for more details. And I'm Kelly Smith. Remember to watch I Love Chili TV every week to get your news about chili in English. Thanks for watching.